it just opened up the world to me. All kinds of new possibilities. I'm teaching. Hey everyone, so we're thrilled to have Dr. Fari here with us today to explore the intersection of communication and social justice. Let's go ahead, Cassandra, and start it off. Dr. Dr. Fari, lots of students like us um, want to know about your time as a professor at Cal State LA. Can you tell us more about like some important um, experiences and moments that really shape your work as a professor, especially when it comes to social justice in communication? Sure, I'd be more than happy. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Uh, so I am going to focus on my experience as a professor in social justice as well too. Because um, I just want to begin with by saying that social justice, the, the concept of social justice has changed so much over the last 30 or 40 years that I've been involved in this work as, you know, as someone who teaches this material. So for example, in the 1980s, a lot of my focus was on the women's liberation movement, on labor, on immigration, on the contemporary struggles back then, which, you know, a lot of immigrants coming from Central America at the time, there was a different, different kind of a civil rights movement. And now we are you know, also in a very different place. We have not only new struggles for, uh, in terms of gender and sexuality, that's I think very important, but also the rise of a new kind of authoritarianism and the real possibility that we may have like a, not a democracy in this country anymore next year. You know, we've had some very, dangerous moments. And a lot of it has to do in relationship to our attitudes towards social justice. A lot of the uh, grievances that the right wing in this country has is precisely about the meaning of social justice. Um, and look at, for example, what Russia just did in Ukraine, where they just attacked and invaded another country and they're trying to uh, like re, um, reassert the old forms of imperial rule Look at what Trump did and the MAGA movement trying to just overthrow an election last year. So as far as, as someone who's teaching this stuff, so I, the first time I taught about social justice, I was a journalism professor. I was working for a local radio station. I was asked to come in and help uh, teach the Latin American Studies Department, teach students about creating documentaries, radio documentaries about social justice and community organizing and activism. So that was you know, quite a wonderful experience. Then when I came back in my mid thirties and I started uh, the graduate program here in our department, I was a student, a graduate student at Cal State LA. And I came back in my mid thirties and I was asked to teach oral communication. And oh, what a tremendous experience that was. In the late 1990s, um, I was teaching a Saturday morning class from 8 a.m. to 12 at students that were from 13 years old to 65 year old retiring police officers, grandmothers, young early entrance program and all kinds of people in between. And I remember teaching about the free speech movement and the importance of this, the student struggles in the 1960s against the war, but to have political speech on campus as well too. Um, I was also a faculty advisor to University Times for a while. Uh, when I came back as a professor, after I finished my graduate school, I went away came back 10 years later with a PhD, and I started teaching here at Cal State. So I was teach, I was an um, advisor for the University Times, and that was also another wonderful experience to see student journalism. And I'm saying this because I hope that those of you who are watching this will consider doing campus journalism work. I think that's a tremendous experience that would help you with understanding social justice. And then also just in the last, uh, I would say seven or eight years, 10 years, I'm you know, teaching things around performance studies, performance and social change, the work that I'm doing around prison with incarcerated populations, that's a very important social justice issue. And we're trying to overcome this, this horrible uh, phenomenon of mass incarceration of millions of people in prison and how it's affecting all their family members. Um, I'm also have, have incorporated some drama therapy work so the focus of my work has to do with trauma and well-being and mental health and incorporating that into all of my classes. So as, grad, as, as undergrad students, my students, when they study research, they also study um, also about expressive arts and how to facilitate workshops 
and do work like uh, around that as well. So I teach a course on queer studies. I think it's very important to work on in terms of issues about gender and sexuality. Quite an experience that you've you know done so much within the school, and it's very fascinating to hear all these stories that you have and accomplishments. So really, really appreciate that feedback. Thank you. What personally motivated you to choose this career path? You know, a lot of personal experiences growing up in Iran as a, uh, you know, watching, um, you know, a, you know, I had, we had all these goals in Iran in the 1960s and 70s about, you know, industrializing the society, modernizing things. And then it all blew up in our faces. Uh, my family had to leave and flee the country. You know, I was uh, industrial, I was planning on being an industrial engineer and I actually studied industrial engineering. But then, you know, we saw the rise of a movement, a movement for freedom. We saw the, uh, the tra transformation of that into a totalitarian, kind of fundamentalist, religious government. Um, and so th that was a, like, uh, you know, that really got me thinking about ideas and about the importance of education and uh, in terms of uh, social justice in particular, you know, learning about the feminist movement. Uh, women's rights, uh, fighting against patriarchal norms, uh, looking at you know ethnic uh, relationships with ethnic minorities in a country. Uh, so all you know, they have to do with questions of democracy and freedom and um, and and I think I mentioned earlier that I was working for a radio station. I was invited to come in and teach a course on documentary production. That was also an important uh, development. Just had that experience of working as a uh, grassroots activist, journalist, community journalist um, in the U.S., learning about the struggles for freedom in the U.S., and um, um, learning to facilitate workshops and things like that. And so when I came back in my mid-30s, I decided, you know, I wanted to move into that direction of teaching. So, oh, okay. So, um, Dr. Afari, use your, using your own experiences, what helpful tips will you give to students who want to have successful careers in communication? The advice that I would give to students are, I would say, first and foremost, and as, as a student in communication studies, to learn facilitation skills, to learn how to run groups, how to do training. Uh, I want you to volunteer in social justice oriented events and organizations. Um, I want you uh, not just on exposing that there's all these injustices in the world, but also providing wellness, ideas for wellness and for healing. And those are the kind of skills that I think are very necessary. Um, I want you to learn how to be more playful, more resilient, uh, to engage in self-care. Uh, as you do this kind of anti-oppressive work, because uh, who wants to be, you know, feel even more stressed out? You know, we want to actually learn the skills of being, you know, more grounded human beings. Uh, work with nonprofits. Make sure you reach out to nonprofits. Do internship work with nonprofits. I want you to do internships with, um, you know, become like, uh, uh, if you can, you know, specialists uh, in terms of uh, working with nonprofits, using your skills as communication scholars. Uh, I want you to, when you do work for internships, make sure that you're prioritizing communication practices. Uh, otherwise, they may give you some other jobs and you want to sort of make sure that you're focused on strategizing, on helping craft messages for these organizations. Uh, you know, to engaging in advocacy work, in campaign communication, lobbying work. Um, so those are the kind of things I would say, um, focusing on effective strategizing for communication skills, especially with underserved communities. That's, that's the key, I think. Um, so uh, we have some great internship programs also in the department uh, with the American Civil Liberties Union, um, we have the Center for Engagement Service and Public Good that the students can work with. They have like at least 10 or 12 different programs that you can engage in working with them. We have the most important, uh, the Project Rebound, working with formerly incarcerated students who are doing advocacy work. And uh, so you can also work with them on immigration policy. We have the DACA 
center on campus, the dreamers center on campus. Those are the kind of things I would say that would help you as you are taking your coursework, uh, focusing on gaining those skills would help you a great deal in building a future career. That's wonderful. And that actually kind of hit right on it with um, similar to the questions that I have, but I want to ask what guidance can you provide to communication majors who aspire to pursue careers in academia aside from internships? Um, you know, how you gave us a few examples as well. Uh, within the realm of social justice, there's a lot that you can do in nonprofits. Um, is there anything in particular that you would like to, you know, let us know for upcoming students, maybe some who are undecided that would be looking into social justice? So focusing on working with uh, agencies, nonprofits, um, but again, uh, you know, just making sure that the, the focus is on communication skills, documentary production, you know, giving voice to people, filmmaking, uh, storytelling. You know, we have, we learn all these techniques of narrative uh, techniques, whether it's a class on argumentation or class on rhetoric um, that uh, in social justice. Uh, the work that we do also in interpersonal communication, I've really learned a great deal in the last few years uh, in terms of combining interpersonal communication with facilitation skills. So having my students, making sure that they're not just doing book study, but that they're always engaged in some kind of uh, work that involves developing their skills. So when, you, when your professor asks you to do a presentation in the class, I always want you to turn that into a facilitation rather than just presenting. It'll have, have people get out of their chairs, have them you know, engage in some kind of a movement, have them engage in a conversation with each other. Um, and then, um, you know, work on like, have, you know, have them think through what would be the best way to, um, to, to develop alternatives to existing forms of oppression, et cetera, in whatever work that we do. So those are, again, both classroom skills that I think are important. Any opportunities that you get to develop quality research work that both uh, helps you gain skills of networking with people, interviewing people, uh, helping them craft ideas uh, with, you know, the, the coursework. I think it's really helpful. What achievements do you believe students can attain in the field of communication studies? Making sure that you get some PR experience designing campaigns uh, while you're, you're, you're studying. Um, Gaining some journalism and media uh, development experience. As I mentioned, like University Times is a really good one, but there's all kinds of other possibilities. And I didn't mention all these incredible uh, opportunities online where that you can develop with social media. Uh, you can engage in other forms of uh, journalism uh, as well. So social media activism and uh, content creation. So what are your personal insights on the future outlook for communication studies, including your thoughts on job opportunities in the employment market? The opportunities are good. The outlook for communication studies is very good. We have to be careful again. I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we are at this kind of a tipping point in the United States right now. And so I would be worried if there is a form of authoritarianism in this country that there would be less opportunities for communication or that the opportunities would be, uh, you know, um, you know, the kind of work that's not very satisfying. I think, you know, because a lot of our work depends on having a flourishing community where people are talking to each other, where learning from each other, where they're you know, engaging in um, honest debates and, um, you know, engaging in, you know, various forms of persuading. And uh, so I think, in that sense, what would be the future outlook is things like social and cultural awareness. Um, there's all kinds of job openings now, and especially in the last four or five years, about getting involved in larger organizations to be more aware of diversity and inclusion and equity as well. So learning those facilitation skills, I think they're very important in the last four or five years. Um, I know every, every large organization that I've been working with in the last four or five years have brought in uh, specialists that are, you know, they're, they're doing these workshops, they're uh, engaging in evaluation of organizations, they're looking at the processes of communication um, to see how they can improve uh, communication processes as well. Uh, working with AI 
in education, in our classes, in you know techniques that we use. But I think that um, we need to be uh, right on top of that, you know, for uh, the way in which it, it affects our curriculum, uh, how it's going to impact the skills that we the skills that we gain in taking advantage of AI without uh, going overboard. Com studies is a quite an expansive major, but we really need to reach out to other uh, departments as well, to, to uh, the other humanities, uh, social sciences, et cetera. So that's where we have a lot of strength if we can do more cross-disciplinary work. I One of the, the my greatest uh, uh, gains in the last decade was uh, that I reached out to drama therapy and I started teaching, learning about drama therapy, which had to do with psychology and theater. Uh, and it Thank you so much, Dr. Afari.